Hey everyone, it's Kellen Brower from RacerX back again with another race examination video from Daytona. Gonna highlight a couple things from the 450 and 250 main events using some highlight footage and footage from Tom Jarnett on the floor. We're gonna start off with the start of the 450 main event because I wanted to talk about how interesting it was that going into this second turn, even though Eli Tomac has the inside of Cooper Webb and they're side by side all the way through, you could argue Tomac's actually ahead through some of it and Cooper pulls even right here and kind of jumps into the corner a little bit longer. But I was surprised to see that Tomac didn't really run him high to try to retain the lead. He gave him a lot of space, even though Webb gave him plenty of room, uh, did not go up there and try to run Webb high and take the lead. So I thought that was kind of an interesting dynamic because then he spent a lot of the first half of the race behind Webb and when he finally started to try to make a pass on Webb they both had this moment right here in the off camber where Webb d uh, doubles down the inside and kind of pushes Tomac a little bit wide and here's a different angle of it from the side view with a little bit of slow motion action first of all remarkable that Tomac actually got stopped for this corner and didn't crash because I mean half of that downhill right there he's riding the nose still trying to grab the front brake and get stopped for the corner so that was Pretty remarkable, but basically what happened right here, you got Webb coming up alongside. He doesn't get the triple over like Tomac, so Tomac's gonna try to shut the door, but they both decide at this moment they're gonna do this little technique where they jump to the inside and try to stop by actually landing hard on that jump. So Webb just does the same thing as Tomac's doing and kind of lands on him and pushes him out right there. I mean, it's basically straight up racing between the two of them. It's a good uh, battle and Kudos to the flagger here. Nice footwork to not fall off and focus on the action all the way through. But of course, as we know, Webb gets uh, hits neutral here after the finish line jump, gives Tomac the lead, and Tomac would kind of pull away from there, but Webb would stay as close as he could. And then there was this moment here between Sexton and Barsha where they came together, and then Barsha goes off the track, comes back on, and is trying to pass Sexton. Sexton eventually got away a little bit, but then Sexton, while he's catching up to Cooper Webb, stalls in this corner right here. When he gets it going, Barsha's already alongside of him. Barsha lands on him on the side again. So right and left side both getting kind of landed on by Barsha from Sexton there. I want to break these down. So first of all, you have this first incident. And Sexton, he makes the mistake, but he's trying to follow kind of the main racing line when he gets back going here. He actually does jump a little bit to the right. I don't know. Maybe he heard Barsh alongside of him and tried to shut the door a little bit more. So you could say that was a tad egregious. But then the next moment right here, it was kind of two things happening at once. You obviously have the stall right here. But as he goes over this jump and gets going again, he's trying to go to this inside line, which is what everybody's doing. He already kind of hears Barsha behind him. And so he actually starts backing out of going to the inside and starts turning right before he even gets landed on. So I think both instances he didn't realize how close Barsha was and Barsha after the race obviously got mad at him but uh what are you gonna do I mean Barsha said they're gonna stay friends and maybe they'll still race clean we'll, we'll have to see what happens going forward but Sexton was clearly flustered after this he had a lot of mistakes including this one that Tom got before the Supercross trip where he came up way short and it just seemed like he never really got back into his groove which was unfortunate because it was a good battle up front before that Eli Tomac would win the main event though with Cooper Webb right behind him the whole way home and it was a good race between the both of them I want to remind everybody that this video is presented by Onyx Off-Road. Nowhere to go with the number one off-road GPS app. Access 500,000 plus miles of trails and roads, open dates, and public lands. Download the Onyx Off-Road app today. Moving on to the 250 class, I'm going to start off with what I think is the craziest clip that Tom got all weekend right here. It's his first corner. Max Ansi goes a little bit wide trying to get the whole shot away from Nate Thrasher, runs over a tough block, and still doubles into the first rhythm section here. This is absolutely blowing my mind to watch this in slow motion because Ansi, I mean, he runs it deep, but he just kind of lifts the front tire off of this little single, gets it back kind of in the right spot, but he just wheelies off of that tough block. Hardy Munoz has nowhere to go. He plows over it. They all kind of still get the line in, but then you can see Hawkins and everybody else has to back out of the challenge. I mean, that's just unbelievable that Ansi still doubled in that section, jumping off the tough block. And then this is the moment that everybody's talking about. Hunter Lawrence putting Nate Thrasher on the ground on the first lap of the race, four corners into the main event in the sand section. And here's a different angle that honestly makes it look a lot greasier than the, the first angle, just because it looks like he comes in and has no regard for Thrasher being there. But you can see, I mean, Lawrence goes in pretty hard here. Like he leaves a breaking late. He knows where he's going here and he could leave Thrasher room up there, but he goes for the line that Thrasher is gonna cut down into. And it leaves the onus on Thrasher. You back out of the challenge or you're also gonna go down right here. And Thrasher hits the side of him and goes down. So you could say, is it aggressive? Yes. Is it dirty? Well, leave it up for you to decide. Obviously, Thrasher was not stoked. Neither was Star about that situation. And unfortunately for Thrasher, who was maybe going to be the guy that could challenge Hunter for this title in terms of straight up speed, he had a horrible main event after this as he went down on this uh, quad line, jumping off to the right side of the track and just had a terrible main event. He's 29 points down in the championship now. So championship wise, definitely sucks that it kind of threw that one for a little bit of a loop. And then this unfortunate moment where Tom Vial goes through the front door while he's in second place early in the main event. Just a bummer to see because Vial had been so consistent through the first few rounds of his Supercross season. 
But a nice job here to eject through the front, even though uh, he was clearly going to go down and he knew it. So he just jumped off the front of the bike. A really nice job to not end up getting hurt worse right there. And he's going to be okay moving forward. So fortunately, that's the good news from that. But Hunter Lawrence kind of cruised to the main event win from here. And let's do a little burnout synopsis. Who had the better burnout between Eli Tomac and Hunter Lawrence? Uh, they're both, you know, waving the crowd on, clicking through gears. But you know what? Hunter's lasts a little bit longer. Eli kind of backs out of the challenge. Hunter's even pumping up the crowd. We'll give the nod to Hunter on this one. But Eli Tomac, seven-time Daytona Supercross winner, extending his championship lead. And we get to see more of it this weekend coming up in Indianapolis.